<laughs> yeah, it was a good time. Uh, I think first time seeing most of that lineup, so it was pretty cool. Uh, had a rough day at work, you know, just too many, too many show beers. Caught up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um. All right, so uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll do like the little intro and then bring you guys in. Uh, but before that, I do have one final question before we fully get started for you guys. Um, do you have any drinks in front of you that you would like to crack with me for the opening crack? Dude, I don't. I am – we're kind of like here practicing clean clean weekdays uh, to get back on, on track here. I, That's uh, fair. So unless you guys want to crack liquor. Oh. Crack a metaphorical, but oh, take a oh, shot. Yeah, yeah. Take a shot. Should we take a shot? Right. All right, let me go. How about that? All right, that, yeah, that works. <laughs> let me get some tequila. Okay, we're taking care of our bodies. Just drink tequila. <laughs> yeah. on this. Okay, um, you know how it is. <laughs> the beer shirt, the Budweiser shirt. We didn't have the Budweiser beers, you know. <laughs> I did see that whole like little uh, merch spread that you guys got. That was pretty yeah, sick. Wasn't that wild? But yeah, we got all kinds of all kinds of swag from that um, that event, or not event. He just like gave it to us because um, we it went back to um, we had a where we were like had a case of Modelo, and Pete's friend works for Anheuser Busch. He like nah, man, like I'm gonna hook you up <laughs> with the good stuff, and then uh, he sent him like ten boxes of stuff. What did you say? Hundred bucks worth of swagger. But oh yeah, nine. I'm gonna hold this try. Dude, he's actually gonna be pissed that I didn't have a Budweiser. I got the shirt on, dude. It's all right. We were just talking about that's, that's, that's lime juice to chase the tequila oh. shots. Oh. Oh. Let's go for real, for real. Over here. Either that or we're just weak. But I didn't think I could do a tequila shot. Well, trade you, trade you. Shot on Monday for... afternoon. <laughs> well, uh. Thanks so much for reaching out. We'll we'll get this uh get this cracked and get your shots down, and then uh, we'll kind of just <laughs> see where the night takes us. Hell oh. yeah! Who knows now? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. In three, two, one. Welcome to the Beers and Bands podcast with your host Michael Torres. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beers with Bands. Uh, this week, you know, I had to, you know, get another Philly band on, so I'm sitting down with a cousin's girlfriend's house. How are you? How are you guys doing? We are chilling. We are warm right? as hell right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for for being on. Uh, for people that aren't aware, uh, my cousin's girlfriend's house is like a, a pop punk band, like I mentioned, from Philly. Um, doing some solid pop punk jams. And there's something I do want to say here in a little bit, but before we get too far, uh, can you go around and kind of say who you are and what you do in the group? Yes, I'll start. Um, I'm Pete. I play guitar and I sing, and I also play drums on the record. I'm Bruce. I play the bass and I also sing. And I'm Andrew, and I play the guitar and also do some singing. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, uh, well, I mean, you guys, you guys are doing some killer stuff. Uh, I, you know, I checked out music videos today. I listened to a lot of the songs today, just kind of getting a feel. And uh, one thing that I that I was gonna mention is, you guys, like I said, are a pop punk band from Philly. But when, uh, when I first started listening to your guys' stuff, um, I feel like you guys could even like, if if I would have started listening to it, not realizing who you guys were. Um, I would have thought I was listening to like an early two thousands pop punk band. Uh, oh, like it, it, you guys fit so well, like right in that niche. Um, and it, it, it's hard to believe that you guys are cranking out these tunes in you know the twenty twenties. Um, so congrats for doing that. Thanks, man. Fashion comes back every twenty years. That's right. <laughs> um, I mean, you guys started out in twenty twenty. Now we're you know you guys. Definitely like a pandemic band had to sit through all that, but now uh, you guys have released, uh, I think, like one EP and uh, quite a few singles. Uh, latest single that came out in July uh, was House into Home, which is a nice, uh, I think it's like 
what, four minutes, but just a nice jam all the way through, great hooks all the way through. Um, it, what, I mean, it came out like mid-July. Now we're towards the tail end of August. What was kind of like the response on that uh, as being, you know, the first single of 2023 to come out? Yeah. What was the response we've had so far, honestly? Mm-hmm. Like, I think uh, it's been a long time. Our last single before that, I think it was September of last year. We sort of had like a pretty big gap in between, but it was cool to at that time to like get everything together and like figure out what we want to do with the next single and like how we wanted to promote it. You know, like the idea for the music video, like put our reality into it and stuff. So I think like sort of having that to get ourselves together and like make a game plan for it definitely led to like a better reception. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I thought uh, it came across very well. And then also, like you mentioned, like the music video, I thought that was like the 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 whole premise and storyline to it was really funny uh, to have all three of you supposedly buy this house, uh, thinking you guys are the only ones, um, and then you know just have a fun time uh, through it, and then have you know uh, the salesperson also be the drummer for uh, tying in and and you know wearing the mask the entire time through the the music video. Props to them for doing that and in the suit too. Like <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine good. how terrible that was. It was not cold when we filmed. What, what, <laughs> not at all. Far dude. from cold, man. And those of us not in the suit were having a hard time with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what was the thought process behind doing, uh, like that storyline and premise for this uh, video? We we really wanted to and definitely incorporate a uh, half <laughs> of the, the nature of the song title uh, and the lyrics. But um, I think originally we had more of a like open house at a house for sale um and i think we just kind of like spitballed off of that and we um yeah went through some yeah. development stages yeah. you know we went to like a party and stuff and yeah you know, I, I, we were gonna originally have it be like we all you know found out that we knew each other uh or like we kind of just made it work and then had a big party at the end but like we did all the production ourselves so like that came out to be too much but i think just in like the process of planning it at least myself i don't know about you guys but i've had a at least one or two landlords that were just like god awful so it was it was kind of kind of nice to you know portray them like obviously it was exaggerated but like <laughs> there's been some really bad landlords in my history so like it was cool to kind of like blow steam off that way and just yeah. kind of poke fun at that because there are a lot of shitty landlords out there i don't have now i have a good one so if they see this like i don't want them to you yeah. know they live across the street and, uh, and stuff but my like, landlord's yeah. chilling. she got and, hella pissed because i parked in front of the dumpster last week when the trash guy was coming that was not cool she was calling me like eight times at like 5 45 in the morning she said you gotta move that car aside from that she's cool though no complaints <laughs> but, but uh shout out to our friend uh brandon ritchie who is the landlord in the yeah. video uh because we we just knew we wanted it to be like a funny like care asshole character and you we're like the part person yeah. <laughs> yeah. like brandon can work wonders shout out katie mccall for belly one photo too filming yeah. that video yep. it was a real team effort all the homies getting together mm-hmm. it's a good time yeah i mean that's that's what that's the nice thing about doing uh you know like all everything kind of more diy is you can involve like all the homies in different aspects yeah, and then just yeah, kind of yeah. highlight what they what they're doing as well and kind of just like almost like cross promote while doing it um yeah. like there's some homies back back where i'm from that do some great music videos and they've always you know just really kept the scene looking good with their what they're what they're able to do uh camera wise yeah and when brandon wasn't on the screen he was the the light guy so <laughs> he was double dip in there everybody was pulling mad yeah. yeah uh is that why you were also like very sweaty just because of the, the light or was it that all from the oh, like, that you, you look like you were going all out it was yeah. that, yeah, and it was just hot in there. Wait, no, 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 it, was, it, was, it was like May. May, May yeah. yeah. But it's been hotter recently, uh, you know, even in the spring like... around here. And, yeah, I don't know if the air was on. It was at our, it was at our friend Caddy's house who filmed it, and it's just kind of like it was a uh, shitty – not a shitty, it was an awesome, but it was – it was a college house. <laughs> Tell it like it is, man. And like, it was not the best house. Ventilation the wasn't great. It was it was like an old wooden house. It was like so yeah, it was hot for sure. Yeah, we did have like a little one of those window fans, but that can only really do so much. Right. Yeah, box fan was busting yeah. at that yeah. photo. <laughs> um, but uh when we did like the second day of filming, 
um, you had to do the workout routine yeah. to get as sweaty as you were. So the second day, so we ended up filming that two days, right? And I think you guys didn't wear the same outfit, but no. I had worn the same outfit for the second shoot, like to follow with the story, right? We were doing like a second half of it. And we showed up and I just couldn't get sweaty, which is like so <laughs> unlike me, yeah. um, just so you're aware. Like I sweat, like if I think it's hard, I just start sweating. So we showed up, I'm trying to through it. Like, dude, I'm not sweating. Like I'm not reaching the level of sweat that we had before. So we had to do a thing. I like ran up all the steps in the house and started doing like jumping jacks and like was doing push ups on the floor and stuff. And it ended up being a cool like little workout compilation just to like meme the uh, drop for the video a little it, bit. It was it, a cool promo. We got we got a TikTok out of it. <laughs> yeah, you do it for the talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. It did end up working. I got pretty sweaty, but yeah. I was disappointed. It's like a like not my brand to not get sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, the things you gotta do for continuity, you know. Like That's props right. for for going through all that. That's Art is happens. suffering. <laughs> like Squidward said. Yeah. Um, one one other cool thing that's coming up uh, about uh, I think like a week after this episode comes out, you're releasing your next and newest single uh, right. called Tommy Huss. Yeah. Which thank you so much for uh, for saying for saying that. Oh, I got it, I got it right. You got it right, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, which thank you so much for sending that over to me so I could check it out. Um, it's it's a great tune. I think it's a great song to kind of follow up um, House into Home. And uh, I mean, for people that, I mean, we're, like I said, we're a week out from that song coming coming out. Kind of sh shed some light as to let the people know what this song is or what they can expect from it. So, Right, I guess it was like a year and a half ago, like beginning of last year. Not quite. A, well, um, go ahead. Like spring of last year, we went on our first weekender, right? And we went with two bands who are now like our homies for life. We went with our friends Card Reader and our friend Scamata, and one of the guys in the band Card Reader, long story short, was going crazy, like setting up all the shows, and he was really hustling, right? And his name happens to be Tom, so the nickname kind of just naturally became Tommy Hustles. And he stayed over my apartment with Pete on our second weekender, which ended up being in July. And the next morning we woke up and we're just messing around playing guitar and stuff. And we ended up coming up with this little riff. And then we're thinking about it. We're like, Tommy Hustles was there. Why don't we just like make the song about him? So we wrote the song about basically his band is called Card Reader because he had went to see a tarot card reader. And she had told him if he kept making music with his friends, it would ruin his life. And he's like, you know what? Heck it. I'm going to do it anyway, right? So he's out here making music, going crazy, booking shows, like going around, you know, all up the coast and everything, playing shows. So we basically wrote the song about that, about, you know, kind of getting bad news from the card reader, but sort of saying, like, I'm going to go for what I want anyway. You know, so it's kind of about, like, not listening to what other people have to say and sort of just going after what you care about. Um, and I think he's a pretty cool allegory for that, you know, his story and the story of forming the band and everything man uh that is that is awesome that you're like basically memorializing uh this dude with this song uh, at the same time uh he's a legend man he is exactly. like, okay. he's a ride he, or die he one time was going to play a show in florida with his band and like the flight got delayed i want to say like three or four times and everybody <laughs> tapped out but tommy huss would not give up and he flew himself to florida made it about 45 minutes before he was supposed to play and just played a solo set for the people and they were like they were amazed by that and i think everybody around was like really like we were amazed not, by yeah like his own <laughs> bandmates and he was the one who like told his bandmates because they they didn't want to let him down but they were like dude this is not feasible and tommy was just like we're gonna do it man and god damn it they got there <laughs> or he did Jeez. not that but yeah he's awesome card reader if you're if you're interested in another awesome band tommy hustles yeah. a lot and he he's got some good tunes and, from uh, uh long island yeah, long island new, long york. Island, new york. york all right hell yeah well uh I'll definitely be checking them out and everyone else should as well i mean with someone that dedicated to overcome three or to four delays uh in flights where most people like it like the rest of his bandmates which i'm not knocking them because i would also probably have been like fuck this i'm going home yeah. there's no way <laughs> um but props to him for overcoming that and still going and playing a show like that's that just shows the dedication to to the craft. Yeah, yeah. he's the true spirit of DIY. That dude for the love of the game, <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. 
so with uh, with this song also coming out uh are there any plans for like uh, a music video to follow or or like what's the what's there are what's all there are uh, but yeah as far as video uh, like we do have plans for a video uh we haven't quite fleshed them out yet we just there's been a whole lot going on like we've been busy recording some stuff playing a lot of shows out also promoting the previous single so the past probably a month or two has just sort of been a whirlwind we've been all over the place um we kind of had a thing going on for a while where like every time we'd part ways with each other we'll be like see you in like 11 hours you know because like we just keep meeting up like the next morning to do more stuff and get busier and busier and busier which is awesome i mean it's a good busy you know you have a lot of fun and like get a lot of stuff done a lot of creativity going around but um the, all that to say like we're still kind of chipping away at the video idea so it's going to be a little stream of consciousness but we're excited to get into it you know probably in the next week or two yeah it's definitely yeah. our priority plan wise i mean by the time this comes out, it will hopefully be completed because we'll have a week. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's not, I'll be editing my ass off for that last week, but it's all good. Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm stoked to see what you guys come up with for that one. Uh, are there any ideas or plans to try and get the the original Tommy uh, to cameo in this? <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny you say that. <laughs> we definitely. Our plan all along was to do that, and as we're coming down to crunch time, it's just a matter of scheduling. So we might have to beg him and plead him to come down to us. Or, He's or not right around the corner. He's probably you. like three, four hours yeah. away in Long Island. So that would be amazing. Like that, like they were saying, from the grip has kind of been the plan. But if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Yeah. You know, if if anybody would would come, it would be Tommy Hunt. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, maybe because uh, like, he hustles so fast. <laughs> Well, like I said, uh, I'm stoked to see what comes, what what the final result is for that one. Because I mean, the music videos, I feel like are are super good and and super great so far that I've been checking out. Um, and I mean, I'm just ready to see what the three three of your guys' minds come up with. Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah, man. it's definitely. Like, I mean, music videos are always kind of like depends on how they're gonna go, and and like some bands take them really seriously, and that's totally cool. But we kind of find ourselves just goofing off and trying to like make them lighthearted because like you know we know how to like make videos to a certain degree but we're not you know the highest production quality so like make up right. for it with stupidity and laughter and like we could use a little bit more like stupidity and laughter right now because a lot of things are kind of serious so it's like everything's getting too real yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> which actually it's funny we're talking music videos i didn't tell you guys this either on my Snapchat memories, uh, the single that we put out before House and a Home going, we filmed the video for that a year ago today. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, funny? Yeah. Yeah, we, Isn't that wild? Yeah. Serendipitous time. And it was also extremely hot out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick. Oh, yeah, no, that was the worst. We that rented was... a Surrey bike, right? You know, like one of like the four people bikes. And oh, we're yeah. riding around all day. And, dude, this thing was impossible to pedal. And I was in the lead pedaling spot the yeah, entire dude, time. Like, we're just getting vaporized. Like, it's so hot and we're sweating so much. Like, it's unbelievable. And literally, like, we probably had it out, what, like two, three hours maybe? Yeah, and, yeah. and for the – because once we had finished filming, we started heading back towards the place we rented it. And eventually, we just got like, this is not moving well enough. So I hopped out and started yeah, pushing be, it. Because, like, there was a family <laughs> of, like – three little kids just blowing past us, Dusting us we're dude. like there's <laughs> something wrong <laughs> when the, so there was something wrong we got like it wasn't that far like it was like a football field away from like where you take the surrey bike back and we go dude we had to break on this thing the <laughs> whole time the brake was on the whole entire time it was not hard to pedal at all we just had the brake on so we're sitting there literally killing ourselves, like trying to get this thing to work. We want to take it. And it was totally on us. Like nobody's fault, but ours. It was not, not our breath, not our greatest moment, but a memory nonetheless. Yeah, but, uh, we also drove all over the place that day because we filmed the Surrey scene along like the Schuylkill River Trail. In uh, Toronto. Yeah, right, like right above where the art museum uh, is. And then after that, we drove to Chestnut, Chestnut Hill, Hill, which is like northwest. Billy, right? Yeah. And then we filmed the scene there. And then after that, we drove to the Lehigh Valley, which is like 45 minutes away from there. Filmed like mm -hmm. another few scenes there. And then we drove all the way back home. So basically, we got a little taste. It was like we got the city, the immediate suburbs, and then like 
the country. Kind of the boonies out there. <laughs> Not really the country, but far enough away that, uh, yeah, it's it's like where I grew up. So we, we got we got all kind of different tastes, different places. And uh, yeah, that, that video was fun, but also a little bit of a nightmare. <laughs> it's a good day in Heinz. We got good garlic yeah. knots that day. We did. That was hey. A lot happens. Talk about the stuff that really yeah, matters. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, w there is another video on your guys' YouTube that I wanted to, to bring up. Uh, it's the live performance at, I think, Walmart Beach. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were just there last week, actually. Uh, for people that might remember, uh, Walmart Beach kind of got uh, iconic here within like the last like six months, I think it was. Uh, because, you know, as you guys are from Philly, you guys know this for sure, but there was a gentleman that would go to Walmart <laughs> Beach and eat an entire rotisserie chicken. Uh, and so it was kind of kind of great to see you guys also playing at that same spot because uh, yeah. that's exactly what I remembered was just uh, that guy. Yeah, we played there right before he did that. I yeah, because see, before the chicken. Chicken Joe, is that what his name was? I think so. Um, I just know him as chicken know. guy. But <laughs> it was funny. It wasn't until after it happened. Because, like, apparently there was, like, invites or, like, flyers and stuff yeah. just around the city to, like, go watch him eat a chicken. Because he, I think he was famous on, like, Instagram or something. Uh, and he would constantly do that. But I remember seeing pictures after the fact of him just at, like, a little table or whatever he was at eating a chicken with a crowd around him. I'm like... That's Walmart Beach. <laughs> I mean, he packed that place up, man. Yeah. Just disclaimer, I was close to that. <laughs> the beach that day. Um, but, uh, yeah, Walmart Beach is a, a super fun uh, place, though. It's very random. We're kind of unsure of how, like, I don't think anybody owns that uh, dock. No, nah, <laughs> so it's I like... Think First come, first serve. It's abandoned type of pier. Behind, it's technically behind Giant, but the Walmart's right next to it, so they call it Walmart Beach. And then like, Giant Beach does. Gi uh, like Giant that. for the people not in the area, the the grocery oh, store. Yeah, it's yes. another grocery store. Right. Sales, if you will. It's just a grocery store. But uh, so you, whoever is setting up the show brings a generator and a PA system, and that's how the magic happens. I mean, it's a pretty sick spot to play a show. I feel yeah, like because like, I mean. It's one outdoors, so always good time. It's not like you're gonna get like, you know, dying of heat stroke inside someone's basement. Yeah. Uh, but also just like being kind of like on a dock with like water behind you, it's not something you would think of uh, as like always being able to play a show that way. So like it's kind of cool that you guys are able to do that. It's funny. It's literally facing New Jersey. Uh, like <laughs> the the body of water is the Delaware River. And you're playing to whoever is over in, I assume Camden's probably yeah, yeah, right Camden. there. They're little boats. You're playing um, to all the tourist boats. Going but through. Okay. that's why, you know, I imagine shows don't get shut down there because it's, it's traveling into a different state. <laughs> um, I don't think anybody really even knows anyway. Yeah. Like, if you're behind Walmart Beach, you don't even know anything's happening. Yeah. Because, like, the speakers face out to the water, like Dre was it's saying. Way, it's very secluded there because it's not even, like, next to the parking lot it's probably another few hundred yards before. oh yeah you get it so you go down yeah. there's like a bike and like walking trail and there's like a little hole in the fence and you like cut through the hole in the fence <laughs> and like go through the yeah. weeds and stuff like it's like super in the middle of nowhere but it's really really cool like i kind of like that aspect of it you know like it's a little like off the beaten path figuratively and literally so yeah kind of cool to do it how much of a pain in the ass is it to haul your gear down there then? Dude. <laughs> they got a shopping cart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got a shopping cart and we use like a skateboard too, yeah. but like there's a ton of broken glass and rocks and little cracks on it. So it's like a ton of broken you, glass. You can't even if you're rolling shit, it doesn't matter because you have to lift over the broken glass yeah. and stuff. So it can be an absolute nightmare for that, but uh it's worth it. It's a really cool place, really cool experience and yeah, like Brian said, we just went to see a show there the other day, and it's just like you get out there, and it doesn't matter who's playing, it doesn't matter how many people are there, you're just like, this is cool as shit. And like, you ready for this full there's, circle? There's like a nice view of the Ben Franklin Bridge, which goes from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, and like when you're watching the band, you can kind of see the city skyline. So like, it's it's scenic. To bring it full circle, though, who we saw at Walmart Beach last week was Brandon Ritchie, who happens to be the real estate agent 
in the house and home music <laughs> video. So <laughs> we're keeping the culture going, you know? Hell yeah. Um, but also it was pretty lawless back there. So like the, the show we played, <laughs> they lit like fire, or not during our set, yeah. but during another band set, they lit fireworks off. Like, no, you, you don't even know. Behind they, the band. Yeah, they lit fireworks off. The band lit fireworks off and shot it at the crowd. It was actually a little <laughs> bit scary. Uh, I don't think everybody appreciated that, but yeah, kind of kind of wild better than a gg allen show man mm -hmm. gg allen throwing more than fireworks at you, you know <laughs> but that i mean that's for some for someone that's not from philly that sounds like a philly thing to do big um, time just like yeah, right. fireworks and do that yeah uh, <laughs> i also watch too much uh it's always sunny so that doesn't help uh depict uh, i think it does help that definitely <laughs> was like right. That could have been a scene straight out of it, and I yeah. wouldn't have thought twice. <laughs> but, dude, that's just called living in Philly, right? Right. Like uh, well, yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't know. But uh, if you guys say it is. Posers, they don't actually Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> really, listen, listen. If you had a really good arm, we're a stone's throw yeah. away from Philly. <laughs> You're close. Right you're there. close enough to be called real Philadelphia. Yeah, we're we're all in the suburbs, the greater yeah. Philadelphia area. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, uh, you know, Tommy Huss coming out on October fifth. Um, kind of getting back into things. I know you kind of said you guys are working on a lot of things uh, behind the scenes. What's on? What's the plan? for you know going forward like uh are there more singles in the works are you guys planning to do like an ep lp or any ideas like that so we got we're working that's kind of where the uh we had so much going on is we released house we were doing like promotional stuff around house thinking about tommy huss playing these shows and we're recording a new six song ep and that was like it's it was tough to kind of prioritize what we had to do but we had limited time to record this EP. So like, we're kind of running out right now. We're finishing it up and, and running out of time. But basically all summer we've been doing this EP uh, between writing, pre-production, and then finally getting to record it. So yeah, six new songs uh, that are in the works and we're not exactly sure how that's gonna go. Um, so kind of TBD, but we're definitely finishing recording them uh, in the next two weeks and then, uh, you know, not really sure on a release cycle there, but uh, that's what we've been working on. Yeah, a lot of hard work has gone into that. Uh, I know we're very proud of these six songs for sure, and uh, kind of trying to stretch our fingers out beyond just being the pop punk band, uh, and kind of you know trying different things and a couple different sounds on some of these songs. But overall, really proud of uh, the body of work and the six songs. So really excited for whenever it does pan out that we can release them, we're, we're excited for that. Yeah, I think the yeah. this new EP plus uh, Tommy Huss and House are definitely our like, we're, we're coming into our own. Um, and I think they're really a good example of the three of us putting our heads together to um, write songs that are us. Good yeah. old camaraderie. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well, no, that's awesome that you guys have been, uh, you know, working hard and getting things figured out. Um, definitely keep you posted for when those, when that EP is ready to go. I'd love, I'm stoked to check it out and everything else, like else that you guys have going on. Like you guys are putting out sick tunes and like you're saying, like you guys are kind of now finding your groove or, and coming into your, into your own. So I'm stoked to see what that results as. Um, and I know everyone else that's listening is stoked as well. Thanks, Cam. Yeah, we appreciate it. We definitely, uh, definitely hype for these songs. And like, if we could, we would get them out, you know, next week. We've been listening to the mixes, or not even mixes, but just like, as we've continued to record more, we watched them go from demos to like, raw recordings from, from the actual studio. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it's definitely cool to see them come to fruition. And uh, yeah, just like a lot. Of it. It's been hard work for sure, trying to like, trying to find a sound that's like, we're we're kind of digging into each of our different influences because uh, we don't all just like pop punk. Like uh, I know, you know, Andrew likes, I mean, you're here to talk about what you like, but I know you like like a very wide range of music. Well, yeah, yeah. I think uh, 
I think all three of us do. Yeah, we just have we have different preferences, I think, in terms of like what our core music is and finally coming together and working that into our own music. I think we found a sound that is unique to us and you know, it could just come off as uh, pop punk adjacent and it probably will, but at, at least to us, it feels like it's not straight pop punk, but uh, definitely rooted in it. Oh yeah. Well, uh, like I said, I'm stoked to, to see what that sounds like and, and where you guys go. Um, before we start to transition, I know we've kind of jumped around between uh, House and the Home, Tommy Huss, uh, and you guys in general, but is there anything that uh, I might've missed or you want the people to know about, about either the singles, you guys, um, or any any other general knowledge uh, that we should know about? Um, I will say that for Tommy Huss, um, it'll be the first song that Brian sings lead vocals. That is true. Yeah, he speaks the truth. Uh, so we're definitely trying to get um, every voice involved. We're so yeah, just trying yeah. new things, like especially with the new songs and um, the EP as well. Like we're sort of just. Uh, like Pete was saying, just experimenting with new styles and stuff and sort of new formats of doing things. Like that's kind of the cool thing about like getting together and writing songs together is you like, there's not really rules. You can kind of just try things out and see what sounds good. And if it doesn't sound good, you just don't do it again. Right. So uh, we've been messing around with a lot of stuff and sort of just exploring new sounds and everything. Um, and like you said, we kind of started like in basically right when the pandemic hit. So for a while it was kind of hard for us to gig out and like really get together and make music the way that we wanted to. So it's cool to be able to have that dynamic now where we can all bounce ideas off each other and like get everyone's influences in there. Um, so a lot of that has been reflecting in the new stuff and we're just super hyped to continue doing that. And then like with you um, coming up and like singing the leads on, on that song, um, are you guys kind of doing it where, was it like one of your songs and that's why you're singing it or or like what sparked the, the reasoning for you being more prominent on that song? I think it's just like, again, like we're just trying to get more of everyone involved. Like we've been doing a lot of like trading vocals and stuff on the new songs mm -hmm. too, like back yeah. and forth kind of thing. So I think it's, it's more so just kind of looking at a bigger picture. Like we all sing and we've all done harmonies and stuff like on the other things. So it's like, why don't we all try to incorporate a little of each other into every song and like see how we can make it work. And also in that song too, we do a lot of trading and stuff yeah. and verses and everything. Oh, so yeah. just sort of experimenting with new stuff and like trying to, um, I guess build more of a chemistry amongst the vocals that we do have. Like we all come from backgrounds where you really like three part harmonies and stuff like that. So um, in playing off that, there's a little like lead vocal dynamic that's cool to play off of too. And like kind of build everyone's parts off of each other. I do think with that song, at least in particular, it was kind of like Brian and I wrote that riff and we were really hyped about it, but Brian got to words right away and that kind of signified like he came up with the melody and stuff so when when you come up with the melody you sing the part right not, not all for sure man <laughs> uh, on that particular one yeah for sure it was just like an idea got us really excited and uh, brian ran with but, the, uh, the yeah there. yeah and also on that yeah the second verse where we're all trading going in around um but the i mean as you guys hear the end of the course of when we you sing the high harmony for the last line purely because he hit the highest notes and we needed that note in there so uh a lot of bounce around yeah you know? yeah we're uh we're having fun with it right right yeah i mean you guys are using the strengths that you guys have in in the right ways uh in the right spots um which is i mean obviously smart to do but it's also cool to see um because i mean usually you know the typical format is like you have the one the one guy that's always doing leads and everyone else is kind of just doing back backing vocals every so often but it's cool to to see bands where they either you know switch off leads uh depending on the song or you know like you're saying you, you guys are really working on sharing all these vocal parts throughout the songs um and i think that's something that's really cool because like not a lot of bands are doing that um because a lot of bands kind of stick to that old school formula but it's nice to see someone come in with a different take and different idea and do their own thing with it oh yeah yeah i think that's kind of what we're trying to do yeah like so many fantastic bands like there's multiple voices like the beatles and like blink 180 blink 182 and never yeah, heard some, either of those bands some, 
Goku band, you know, like there's just what, yeah, there are so many great bands like do like switching up the vocals and it just makes it like fresher as well mm -hmm. because you can kind of know what to expect if there's just one guy the entire time. So, yeah, and like the core group of us is the three of us, right? So it's like, how can you kind of make the most eclectic and like diverse sound out of what you have with the three guys, you know? So I think that's where the vocal dynamic came in too, is like, it's not only about our instruments now, it's also about like the vocal chemistry that we have with each other and like how we're writing the parts around the instrumentation and stuff. So sort of just like deepens the pot for us a little bit, helps us to have a little more fun with what we're doing. Yeah. Well, like I've said, I'm stoked to see uh, how this all comes out. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely be listening as soon as that, that EP drops, whenever you guys are ready to announce it and go from there. But, um, but everyone, if you're listening, be ready for Tommy Huss and definitely go check out uh, House Into Home if you haven't already. Um, we're gonna start to transition to the later half of this episode. Uh, as we start this transition, you know, this is obviously Beers with Fans. Uh, you don't have to be drinking on these episodes because I would definitely do that for you. But I know you gentlemen uh, took a, a good old shot of something to start the episode. Do we need what another you guys... shot? <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. Uh, but what did you guys take a shot of today uh, to start this episode? Today, we took a shot of Jose Cuervo. Uh, Cuervo. Uh, it was the clear tequila. I don't know. So Blanco. Season, baby. Yeah. And, and two of us took, I didn't have any lime, so we just did artificial lime juice. Uh, and then Brian took his straight. And, that's right. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of heartburn from it, but that's just like getting old, I guess. But I don't know. I, I, tequila, is a, tequila is a nice little drink. Yeah. You're a little no. tough. You got me sweating down here. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't today. So like the one shot of tequila is like, ooh. Uh, now I know, uh, obviously by, you know, the merch that you guys get to rep, you guys are kind of like a Budweiser band. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, is tequila like the, the band's liquor of choice? It's um, my liquor. I'd say for me, actually, no, not for me. He's yeah. a mixologist, man. You gotta be careful. Yeah, for me personally, recently, recently, yeah, I, I think tequila has been my number one. But more specifically, mezcal. Um, and speaking of which, uh, you can go into our uh, our TikTok and you'll see a step by step guide on how to make a margarita. <laughs> that's true. Mm. My cousin's um, girlfriend's margarita, man. Yeah. So. And that's mine. And I, uh, Jägermeister would be my liquor of choice. Okay. Uh, didn't have any left today, but uh, we just, we actually just played a house show uh, in July with our, at our friend in Schemata had a house at the beach and it was with Tommy Huss from Card Reader and uh, threw back a lot of oh, Jägermeister at that show. Some would <laughs> say a little too much Jägermeister. <laughs> some, some might. Oh my. The footage of that set will not ever make it out of <laughs> <Yeah>. Minecraft. <laughs> we were chilling, we were having fun. There's some good pictures from that day. It was the lost set. <laughs> I lost uh, it. You know, I, I think I've only done Jaeger a few different times, and tequila, I mean, I love me some margaritas, but I can only probably do, like, one shot. Uh, like, if we're just doing shots, I can do one, and then I'm like, all right, I'm good. Uh, we're get not going to do a second one. Yeah. <laughs> like, Honestly, like in general, uh, we were just saying like, um, tiki, like shot glasses. I've always thought were just like a little too large to like take in one sip. Like, if it were like half the size, I'd be like cool with it. But it like really fills your mouth up, honestly, and it's not how I would ever drink anything else. <laughs> Got to get the technique that yeah. way. Throw it down I'm your throat cool. so it doesn't sit in the mouth and you don't get as much taste out of it. But that's if you I, if you do it wrong and you don't have a chaser, that can be a nightmare depending on where you're at. I feel like the the hand. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Maybe half a shot, I would okay. be pissed because you're. But well, otherwise, if I'm just at home, yeah, I'll take a half yeah. shot any day. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's fair. Uh, I don't know. I, I still can't, I'm still really terrible at shots uh, in general. I, it's funny enough. I saw this video on TikTok today. It was this like girl went to go do like a shooter of fireball and her friend's like, don't do it. Like you're going to get sick. She's like, no, I'll be fine. 
finishes it and then like you just see the realization in her eyes go like in a split second of her just being like oh yeah that was bad uh and then like her just like the next shot was just like her by the toilet just like smiling at her friend uh and i felt i related to that so hard um but yeah Dude, fireball fireball is controversial i know a lot of Fireball's people tough. do not like it but i think it's one of the easiest ones to drink yeah. it's like we were talking about earlier with like the sweet drinks it's just too mm. sweet for me you know like you take like two shots of that and i'm ready for bed not because i'm drunk i'm just like ate too much sugar <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i think uh so one night we had booked a show and it was like a holiday show and the bar was like we'll do like a deal for anyone that buys fireball uh for every dollar they spend in fireball we'll donate a dollar and yeah. i think the shots were like a dollar or two dollars or some shit so you know we were all a bunch of punk kids we're like hell yeah we got to support the donations that this is going for uh so like we're all doing shots of fireball and ever since then like i also didn't really give a shit for like cinnamon or spicy stuff like that so like it was terrible the entire time and and like i for my friend's uh wedding all the groomsmen got like shooters of fireball like i just left those in the box I was yeah. like, don't even worry about it triggered you it's like you're drinking a <laughs> big red gum you know like it's not yeah. big red gum's fine no quarrel but like in moderation But I mean, so if anyone's listening, next time you go see uh, these dudes, make sure you have a bottle of Jaeger and a nice uh, mezcal to to share with them. Um, uh, for this episode, I'm just drinking uh, a good old uh, Coors Light, uh, and very slowly, I've been like, like I told you guys, I went to the Newfound Glory show last night, so I've been kind of just feeling very hungover all day, uh, which has not been fun. Um, <laughs> You know, once you hit like thirty, it just gets worse. I feel like. Uh, but... Oh, it happened before thirty. Yeah. Now. I was say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haven't hit thirty yet, but have hit the point where it's like, man, three true. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Why'd my you head? Know... I think it's after twenty-five. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. All the novelty wears off, and you're like, I'm just doing this now because I have to. Yeah, you know, like when I was twenty-one, I remember one day having like eight blue moons. Um, and I just, that's not even fathomable to me right now. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll have like one beer. I'm like, I'm good, man. You're going yeah. to the beach, drinking half the bottle yeah. by yourself. <laughs> I mean, not. It depends on the guy. beach house a little bit, right? But... Um, but that's the little beer alcohol segment for this episode. But now we're going to kind of transition into what's now, what not now but like what is my favorite part of the whole episodes um this is where we kind of just talk about some fun stories from guys time of music where there's you know shows tours time recording um as i normally say they can be anything horrendous to tremendous or any adjective in between um easiest way to think about it is just think about the stories that you always reminisce about with your friends those are usually the best ones that i love to hear dude i'm trying to i know that there's one from my old band when Andrew was filling in. You might not even know this. It's not really a story. It's a collection of stories, but we went on. It it's was, a volume. It was either two or three week long tour, yeah. and we went from Pennsylvania down to Florida, over to Texas, up to Chicago, and back, back to Pennsylvania. In 15 passenger, like 2000 Dodge Ram van that didn't have air conditioning, actually open functionally. It was also July. It was July, <laughs> and we toured with two bands in one van. So there were 10 of us. Was it 10? Was uh, it I think it was eight. I think there was eight of us. The drummer of the other band filled in on. on right, right, on, right. So there yeah. was eight of us in one nope. van. And on, uh, I want to say tour date number three. So we, had, my band had a fill-in guitarist who was Andrew and a fill-in bassist who was my friend Paul. And yeah, my man. friend Paul went out to the van to open the door and he pulled the sliding side door straight off the van. Like the... <laughs> <laughs> the metal snapped and the fucking door just broke off of the van. And he was so shell shocked. And I was like, I don't even know what we do, man. And, and my brother was able to get it back on the track and close it. So we taped it. So the remainder of the tour, you had to exit out driver's oh, yeah. side, passenger side, or out the back. That's awesome. And then 
We got to a Walmart in like Chicago, I think. I think like the pay, the pay Mario one. And we all went into the Walmart, and the last guy left from the other band. It was not my band; it was the other <laughs> band. He had the keys. He had the responsibility, and he left the keys in the van and locked them into the van. <sighs> So we come back out. We're like, how the hell are we going to get in? You just untape the door. No. Just pull it off. <laughs> so I, my genius ass. <laughs> right. but I, no, because the doors were locked. We locked the doors. But what about the one that was just taped It was on. still locked and shut and taped. It was, it was no yeah, problem. This is 4D chess over here. <laughs> I thought, oh, why don't I just, because you could, you could like pop open the back window. So I thought I was going to, and I think one of the lot, one of the latches on the back window is broken. So I just had to uh-huh. reach in and try and get the other one open. I was trying so hard, so hard, and then the back windshield just shattered on me. And <laughs> nice. I haven't heard this. So by the end of that tour, we had no air conditioning. Uh, we had to exit out of either the driver's side, the passenger side, or the rear, and then we had to put tape and cardboard on the back yeah. windshield. <laughs> that was towards the end, I believe. Yeah, that was. I yeah. mean, Chicago. We had to work our way back through Ohio, and then yeah, we made yeah, it back home. Yeah. But it was still just like. Out of every everything that could go wrong did and like I, and I would say probably t- at least two of the shows got canceled while we yeah. were on like yeah one of the shows got canceled in Tallahassee Florida and we picked one up in San Antonio Texas and I don't know if you know how maps work but <laughs> they're <laughs> nowhere near each other so yeah, we had like 20 minutes we had a 13 13- <laughs> Your dry, like we thought we were just going to Tallahassee, and it was like, all right, we picked up a replacement show. It's in San Antonio, <laughs> so we drove through the night to San Antonio yeah. to make it there. And then, um, and the Chicago- only, well, yeah, Chicago got canceled, so we just sat in a Walmart and played Heads Up on our iPhones for like five hours. Wait, what is that? It's like the game where you hold it up. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. 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 Heads Up, office, yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. That was serious yeah. crazy. And then the only other thing I remember from that tour is one night, all eight of us slept in the van and my brother slept in the passenger seat and I slept in the driver's seat with my feet up over the steering wheel to try and like stretch out. And Tyler Reed, the the one guy from the other band was so fed up with it. He got out of the van in the middle of the night, goes into Walmart, purchases a lawn chair and he slept (laughs) out back by the trailer with his feet up on the trailer in a lawn chair and that was just that was that tour in a nutshell there was a lot of yeah and we played we played a burlesque show with it was like a combination of a dating game a burlesque show and then we came on after that we were only (laughs) we were yeah it was just a wild why was there an shit. hourglass show? Or no, no, no. no this was, you played another one? Yeah, we. this was Whoa. literally it was a live dating game that was awkward as hell. And yeah. then a burlesque show. And we then played a burlesque show, too. Pants. This band also played a burlesque show. I didn't know yeah. you guys played a burlesque yeah. show. That one was definitely wilder, too, because like, the dating game before was just like... The DJ was trying to get some like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was uncomfortable watching it happen. Um, was, like, but, yeah, speaking of that, like... My girlfriend's house, uh, about a year, a little bit over a year ago now, we were asked to play a burlesque show uh, right here in Philly. And uh, once again, we were the only band. <laughs> yeah, it was like, um, it was a great time. It was like pop punk burlesque. And they, was, would, they would dance to recorded pop songs. It was songs. emo night, yeah. Or emo yeah. night, I'm sorry. So they would dance to emo songs. And then in between each dance, we would play a song. And then we accidentally started playing one of the songs that the dancers had playing. <laughs> so Sugar We're Going Down was live burlesque to our yeah. rendition, uh, which uh, threw everybody off. But, but we made it through. Yeah, there's some fantastic pictures on the internet <laughs> of, um, <That's> some very... <laughs> of uh, us playing during the shows. So there's a... Not, not, for, not for like a family audience. <laughs> yeah, NSFW. All this to say, if you got any burlesque shows out your way, man, you know who's lined to bang. <laughs> yeah. <play> Very <laughs> true. Uh, all I got to say is I really wish or hope that there's like a video of from that tour of you guys all trying to pile out of the van just going through the doors. Because that, that would have been a, like a great like little montage like uh-huh. thing. Dude, that was, that was before content was king. We were not... Yeah. And in that state of mind, we were not in a content <laughs> mood. We were in a, 
I want I want to say that most people probably piled out the back, and then like the driver would go out the driver's side. Maybe one person other than the passenger would go out the passenger side, but it just kind of ended up being like what it was, and that's like that band in particular. We kind of operate under the same terms. We just don't go as crazy right now because like back then. It was like summer break from college. We're mm -hmm. getting in a van and we are driving and that van cost, you know, $1,500 and we put some work into it, but there's only so much work you can put in when you can't fix the air conditioning, you can't fix the windows that don't go up. So you're like, fuck it, we'll do whatever we got to do. And <laughs> somehow, some way, my friend Paul, who is like a really skinny, not super strong person ripped the door right. straight oh, off cool. yeah throw in if paul's listening throw right now paul sorry watches, but man. yeah paul would not deny that Paul's dude. gonna start lifting now just paul's, to prove you wrong paul's, he's a healthy being but he's not the strongest not he would not be my pick to pull a door right off the van but i was there i saw it happen and that was one of one moments in life uh then uh, i guess one more tour related um story is just like we we did a weekend there to from philadelphia down to kentucky oh gosh which is like <laughs> a very long drive we did um stop in maryland the day of the tour starting the place we were about to drive through canceled the show like we rented the van like 45 minutes ago and they're like they're it was off. We're like, dude, we just paid for the man. What oh. do you mean? Uh, and for the, the opener of that show, uh, lived like around the area, so he just threw. On. Which was super cool. Uh, Shout out Alaska's Angels. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, what was the then the second show we played in? Was that Virginia? Pizza Den. Yeah, the Pizza Den, yeah. man. Kind of like a CCP place. They, we got a bunch of free pizza. It was awesome. And then we drove through the night to Kentucky to play in Kentucky. But the next day, the Eagles, who are Philadelphia's football team, if you didn't know, were playing in the <laughs> NFC Championship game. <laughs> and I had tickets to go to the game, and there was no chance in hell I was missing that. So thankful. We, so we got to drive yeah. 10 and a half hours. Yeah. Right after. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was awesome. So we got out of Kentucky literally midnight. At, at midnight. I was like, guys, we gotta go. It just we wanted the goal was to get out before midnight, and we failed. But we did get off like right at midnight, and, drove uh, straight through, and I got to the parking lot to tailgate with my parents at like 1 30 p.m. and kickoff was 3 30. And I want to so. say I dropped him off at the parking lot tailgate with his parents. I got home at like 2 30. So that was <laughs> awesome. That was really, really cool. <laughs> and then of course we got pulled over along the way. Oh my god, yeah. We did, yeah. Yeah, literally nice. like 20 minutes into the drive out of Kentucky. And was that got, West uh, Virginia uh, Cobb? No, no, it was Kentucky. Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, sure. He was great. He was a nice guy. He, yes. Yeah, he did he yeah, he didn't give us a ticket. He let us so. go. Because, like, like, I was just driving, and they were, like, asleep. Cause, well, I'm like, I'm not doing this whole ten and a half hour drive myself. So, like, we have to do it in shifts. So, I'm just playing, like, very, like, chill music so I can, like, not go crazy. And then they can sleep. And I'm, like, spray, like pouring water on my uh, head so I can, like, help <laughs> stay, like, invigorated. And the highways, like, the I don't know how the highways are around you, but, like, around other areas in the country you'll just be on a highway and then it just turns into a residential like little town and you it doesn't tell you so i'm going like 60 miles an hour and then all of a sudden there's like houses in a gas station and i'm i remember like they're all still asleep and i'm driving i'm like guys uh i think we're about to get pulled over because the car just like pulled out yeah. right behind us and there was no signs like there wasn't no. a speed limit sign no. in sight but it's it did clear. it did say it on your map it no did. it didn't it didn't <laughs> we got pulled over though i promise <laughs> hand of god it did not say because the cop comes up and he like we open the window and dre's like yeah what's going on and the guy's like are you aware how fast you're going and he was like oh i didn't know what the speed limit was i couldn't see a sign and he made us look so dumb. He points at the phone and the speed limit yeah, on the Google. Which I didn't know. I mean, I'm just driving. I'm keeping my eyes on the wheel. How can I look down? Yeah, you're not supposed to look right. at your phone. You're yeah, driving. I'm just so, obeying the law. But uh, yeah, we got off without with a warning. And as a follow up 
uh, last month for our July weekender. Andrew got pulled over I, again. Dude. <laughs> yeah, He's got yeah. a heavy foot, baby. I know. <laughs> I, I was just keeping up with traffic. They just had to. They made an example out of in, me. In Virginia, they police the highways so tough. And I feel like right before you got pulled over, I pointed one out to you. I was like, there's yeah. a cop. You got to watch out. He's like the radar detector. Like, we're then, driving around. He's like, there's a cop four miles behind us right now. <laughs> yes. I'm just, I drive a lot, and they're always hiding in spots that you would least expect them. So I'm just always scanning. And, you know, can't always be watching you, yeah. Dre. It's a learning <laughs> experience uh, driving. Uh, well, what was the second yeah. time? Third time. Well, you don't we learn have the a review before a test. Yes. Yeah, what do you yeah. mean? You go over the, the lesson plan like four or five times. Like right. it so in. we got about three more pullovers before. Yeah. <laughs> it's a couple hundred more bucks in tickets. It is. He what just it calls is. what it is and drives the speed limit. Yeah. <laughs> Man. There's a lot of uh, stories. Sorry. We're <laughs> all we're no. just, at this point, we're just venting to you about our struggles. <laughs> That's okay. I'm here for it. See, I'm like a therapist. You don't have to pay. Just tell me your tour stories. That sounds great. I won't tell tell Carl, my therapist. (laughs) Um, I guess the only other cool thing on that Kentucky trip, it was in our show was in Corbin, Kentucky. Shout out to Zach and Terry Ann and family who hosted us and Zach throws shows down there. They own a record store called White Rabbit Records, and uh, he plays in a band called Bud K.Y., but Corbin, Kentucky is home to the first KFC. Mm-hmm. So there's like a nice museum to KFC, and we ate at the first KFC. It's very That's delicious. Big was, museum. Yeah. yeah, like some of the KFCs around here, not always the best quality. Yeah. That KFC was great. Real, I went in there with low expectations. Yeah, I was like, KFC is not my cup of tea. Like, I had some good KFC, don't get me wrong. Just across the board, not always the best. So I was going in there thinking it wasn't going to be great. They made everything, like, in front of you and stuff. They <laughs> gave you a number. It was crazy. And there was, like, a dining hall there and everything. Yeah. It was a very elaborate KFC experience. So it was really cool. Uh, no, I totally understand what you're saying about, like, KFCs. Because, like, the one that I used to kind of go to by my old house, you'd pull in the parking lot. There'd only be two cars because there's only two people working. Yeah. And, like, it would it, – they're not always a hundred percent. Uh yeah. <laughs> find a good one, then you're then you're you gotta like keep going to that one. Otherwise sure, just... yeah. it's like a long list of chicken adjacent kind of shops and KFC's really lost their place with all the other all the other guys popping up. See, when it yeah. hits, it hits, don't get me wrong. I'll be like, Popeye's just usually a safer bet. If you're going for like the big two, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Popeye's is just a safer <laughs> roll of the dice, you know. Uh since we are talking about food, there is a question that I got to ask you guys because yeah. I recently started asking uh, Philly bands this, or I guess Pennsylvania bands. I don't remember who the last band I asked, uh, but they were the first ones. So I'm, I want to I want to keep this trend going. Oh. Um, so you know, for for Philly and like Pennsylvania in general, there's kind of two competing gas stations. There's Sheets oh, oh, and no. there's Wawa. No. No. Okay. Okay. The okay. band's breaking hold up on, tonight, dude. The gotta, band's breaking I gotta, up. I gotta cut you off real quick. Get okay, out of so here. I'm, I'm the odd one out here because. Because yeah. he's an idiot. There's. <laughs> right. You you know who the two gas stations are. Let's just get him out yeah, there. It's Wawa. Them. It's Wawa and she, Did you say that? Sorry, that. I yeah. got blacked out when you broke. Yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. When you blacked out, like I had said it right there. But yeah, I, there's sheets yeah. and Wawa. Uh, yes. Thank you. I. I love Wawa. There's no problem with Wawa. I live a block from two of them. Like, I go there all the time. I, I live in the town where Wawa was founded. Yeah, this is our roots, man. So, like, so he's a defector, basically. <laughs> but, like, dude, there's too many of them around. I am Team Sheets 115%. And we're always getting fights about it. I'm the only Literally. one in the band who's Team Sheets. Everyone that comes out on the road with us, I'm the only one who's Team Sheets. I want to say the last two weekenders that we went on, Two different people in two entirely different states, arguably two different regions of the country, completely on their own, told us we should go to Sheets without any provocation whatsoever. We're in, uh, where was it? Uh, Gastonia, Gastonia, North Carolina. We're playing this festival, and these dudes come up to us, and I'm talking about the barbecue and the food in the area and stuff, and they go, listen, if you have time on your way back, they're like, there's this gas station. 
and it's called Sheets. And I was like, brother, I'm going to stop you right there. I know all about Sheets. And then guess who looked pretty dumb when I mean, everyone else was the Sheets nah. up? I'm just saying. Here's the thing is that both those regions, I don't know where the other one was, but like where we traveled Pittsburgh, to. Pittsburgh, this was on Yeah, Wednesday. Pittsburgh people don't get Wawa. Like all the people that like Sheets don't experience Wawa. So that's why they like Sheets. What are you sheets. talking about? I am a living testament right here. One I of experience one. Wawa yeah. like four nights a week. Yeah. That's why it's not as good as Sheets. Yeah, no, it's it's Wawa all the way. Sheets is <laughs> right, like Pete said, Sheets is on top. Sheets uh, is greasy, there. sloppy step cousin. To okay, Wawa. okay, let me ask you this. I I'm not sure what they call them in your area, but like a hoagie is that a sub, right? Yeah, like a, a so, sandwich. Yeah. Okay, so we call them hoagies here, right? And that's like Wawa's big claim to fame. The hoagies are pretty good. But like, why would you get a gas station hoagie? It's not a gas station with hoagie. With holographic roast beef. It looks like a Charizard <laughs> card. Why would you get a hoagie with Charizard on the bun when you could go to Sheets and you get mozzarella sticks, you can get boneless wings, you could get jalapeno poppers, You're making you can my get point hot right stickers, here. dude. All right, all right. So here's here's the actual, like, the fact of the fact is that if you want a hoagie, you want a panini, you want a quesadilla, anything that's like wholesome food. They're all the food, same thing, though. Shut just different up. bread. If you want wholesome food, you go to Wawa. If you're drunk as hell and you need some food to fill up your stomach that's greasy as could be, you go to uh, Sheets. Because it's better. No, not because it's better, because it's greasy, it's fried, it's fattening. There's a me, time me and a place for that. There's a time the and a place for that. Me a little too much. That's all I'm saying. They also do have two-for-one hot dogs, and I can't knock them there because no, that's see, usually my he choice. He likes the worst thing on the menu. The hot dogs there suck. Everything else is great. You're, you got it all wrong, man. You like got to get back curry. down to earth. Nah, really. nah. Just constant cheese bites, man. Line Chipotle up. chicken cheese steak. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, I will say... Uh, even though I don't remember the last band I, I said it to, I know it was like one of the recent episodes, but they also said Wawa. Yeah. Thank you. It's fine. They could be wrong too. It's <laughs> all right. And I I think when we drove through Pennsylvania, we stopped at more Sheetses than Wawa's. I don't have a good ju judgment. I mean, it also has been like multiple years since I've been in, in the land of Wawa and Sheets. Uh, so what do you, what I, do you I'm not a good judge. Do you have like uh, a competitive? So we have we have like uh, like, well Iowa has like come and goes. Uh, we have Casey's. That's like our local ones outside of the cities. Yeah, they're good. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. I always forget what like, what all we have for gas stations. I'm so it's really weird in in Minnesota. I just stop at the gas station just for like, gas. But like where I'm from, that's not. I know. What well, I, it, it, like, so I, I'm originally from like a small town in Iowa. Where like, oh, it's there's nothing else to do. We'll go get gas, but also, let's just go see what they got for drinks in there. So like, because our our gas station also had like a giant liquor store attached to it. Um, where in Minnesota you can't buy liquor in a gas station. Yeah, Pennsylvania uh, is starting to kind of get there. My beer, I think. Beer, yeah. yeah. We yeah. have the state store. You can only buy liquor at the state store here. Um, Jersey, I think you can buy liquor at least at the beer store. I don't know if you can buy it at the gas station, but Jersey, like, half hour away from here probably, and you don't need to go to the state-regulated store. So that's kind of cool, but we're a little more limited over here. Yeah. Well, like, we can't even get beer in the gas station either. Like there's just no alcohol in, at all. We're very, we're yeah. very recently transitioning into being able to, because for the longest yeah. time you couldn't. Royal and Farms. like any time we would go out yeah. of state, you know, especially like my old band, we would go down south, and it's like, whoa, you can pick up just like a one-off <laughs> can of beer at the gas station. Yeah, I'm like, isn't that how drunk driving happens? <laughs> also, I just want to revert real quick. Guess no. who has a beer fridge at every single location that starts with <laughs> yeah, S and so, ends with an eat? So basically, so they, they encourage, yeah, they encourage and they're drunk driving. Drunk driving. <laughs> okay, we got some world. friends that do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please cut that. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I I just I'm not too familiar with the gas stations, is what I'm saying. Uh, even though I've lived here for four years, which is kind of weird uh, that I haven't figured that shit out. Um, because someone else on a different episode asked me, like, what gas stations we have around here. And I was like, I don't even fucking know, man. Like, I just put yeah. in the card and 
pump it and then just i leave uh which sounds super weird but uh but yeah <laughs> but it's so i like I, I think the tally now is I'll, I'll put you guys at like what one and a half one and one and th- two three quarters two thirds two thirds for sure. four thirds. all right uh everyone listening hopefully i keep this going with all the the philly or general vicinity bands to see just what uh what else people feel like yeah. with that yeah you got philly new jersey i think down to dc virginia and then florida has some wawas but i've heard some people say a florida wawa is not like a true wawa which is like fair I enough like it's not it's there's like, like there's like yeah that's like saying like a uh, waffle house in pennsylvania it's not going to be good like don't go to waffle house if it's not in the south is there a Pennsylvania Waffle House? There, there is. Are. It's in Hellertown, and it's awful. Hellertown, yeah, it's not right. Yeah. yeah Elkin, Maryland cool. Waffle House hits pretty hard. It's like an <laughs> hour away from here. <laughs> well, you know, now that your band is kind of divided on on edge for the night, I think, you know, this is a good way to kind of just lead us out. But I also feel like to kind of bring you guys back together, um, <laughs> I, I want to ask you guys one one last question. Uh and this can be like a group answer. This can be individual. But what would you say has been your favorite moment so far since the birth of uh, my cousin's girlfriend's house? Ooh, that's a big question. That's a good Ooh. question. I have to think through all the moments. Hmm. Yeah. We played some weird places. Where we played, we played a chicken shop one time. Just pretty fun. I don't know if I'd say I was a favorite, but the chicken was great. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Shout out Grandma Stamps. We're issuing a lot of shouts tonight. Yeah. <laughs> My boy's going to be going tomorrow, too, man. I got um, favorite moment. Is I mean, band. honestly, as I mean, I would say our we, we've done a couple weekenders with bands who have become really good friends of ours. Schemata, Card Reader, uh, Keep Your Secrets was a really fun weekender That's that we time. did. So, like, that uh, Main Street Detour, who we just did our yeah, weekender that friends. was missing a Friday show. Uh, but, like, making friends like that has been really cool. Um, it might just be recency bias, but I think that beach show that we played where uh, the set was lost, it was a lot of fun. Like, the set wasn't good, but the day was a ton of fun. And then also, like, recording this past EP, like, writing, really working on this past EP. The, fir- the first two singles, uh, House and... Tommy were fun to write together, but we really sat down as a unit and like ground, grinded, grinded, I guess would be mm-hmm. the right way. We really grinded at like the writing, the transitioning from skeleton to like full song and now the recording. So it's been really enjoyable. I, I know that's not like a uh, fun story, but like that's, it has been very enjoyable um, to do that for sure. Yeah. I'll say like favorite moment. Um, yeah. I mean like all the, every show is, incredible to play we have so much fun up there but um i, I think like uh favorites like, like this moment is us releasing house and um because i feel really the best reception we've ever gotten um, yeah so far and um it felt like all the hard work paid off um, record and release that song because we really like that's definitely the hardest we've ever tried for anything mm-hmm. ever. Um, and period. <laughs> like like Brian said, there was the periods where, and there still are, where we're just working. I'll, like, I'll get done work at my job from three o'clock, at three o'clock, and then it's just like, all right, so we're meeting up at four o'clock, so we can like write or uh, record some content, so we can work out the music video um, like idea. And then we'll do that till nine o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. Then it's like, all right, well, see you guys in like 14 more hours where uh, we'll do it all again. <laughs> we had to, we had a streak going for that for a while. Yeah. We had like a snap streak. We got like the red heart, you know, like we had to have been doing it for like close to two weeks. Yeah, so it was, it was like, literally every day. It was like, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, right? it was right about the time that we released House into Home because we were going balls to the walls, recording the EP, plus doing content for House, plus whatever random show yeah, yeah we had like a weekender thrown in there so it was definitely like saw these guys so much i mean we, we see each other all the time anyways and 
haven't gotten tired of each other yet unless we're talking about sheets in which case <laughs> shit there's gets nothing to be tired real. of except the pinkers <laughs> flower man there's have you even had all of them yet no, I have all the things. So you find you make... one you like and you have that yeah. one. How could you even make... <laughs> I don't go there and like, tired of them. It's not a science experiment. I'm not trying all the paninis. Maybe tell me this. Days. Tell me this. The sheets have mac and cheese brisket panini. I'm sure Ooh. if you have no, to do no, it, they don't. They probably would. Don't listen. But can you get mac not. and cheese bites at Wawa? <laughs> you can get mac and cheese and bite it. I don't know. Do you have mac and cheese? Anyway, this mac and cheese is great. It's Stouffer's mac and cheese. I'm getting it out. I'm getting it out there. <laughs> All my mac and cheese is Stouffer's. You're right there I mean, on my cave, man. The I'm mac and cheese perfect. brisket thing sounds amazing. Oh yeah, right it slaps. Now. It really. Do. It's a little bit heavy, so like I gotta pick and choose when you go for that. But like when you do, it's an experience. Um, are you? Can you guys see me? Okay, like you guys froze on my end. Oh, shit. oh no, you're uh, we can it. see you. Okay. Can you hear us still? Yeah, you guys like I can hear you guys fine. Oh, it's just cool. he is froze, so I just want to make sure like you we're still good. Um, yeah, you're good. You're still smooth right. sailing on our end. All right. Uh. <laughs> uh. Well, if uh, you know, I try not to bring back up the whole Wawa and Sheets thing. You guys did that on your. I don't own think you did. Yeah, you asked for good time. memories, and we brought up the Sheets. Yeah. War. it's like it, do you did you note how sheets was first in the good memories category <laughs> before wawa i don't even have a response to that dude. I literally don't even have a response to that. you'll see in, in about two to th you know two to three years if this band breaks up there's only one thing that could do <laughs> once i get that sheets endorsement they're gonna kick me to the curb you know i should get an endorsement dude i send everybody to sheets <laughs> Well, I think if you get the endorsement, then like the other two, these guys have to like kind of fall on board with sheets. They're gonna right? reach off me. They're gonna be like, "Oh, you get free food of sheets now?" Like, "Oh, I never said <laughs> hey, sheets suck." We're not driving like an hour to to get. That. I literally will drive an hour to go to sheets, like disconnected from anything else. Like, it's not like there's yeah. something up there that I'm going to see. The only thing I'm going to see is like the little order kiosk at sheets. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll drive up there. It's like a Friday night, man. You're not doing anything. Get a couple of your boys. You go up and get some Wisconsin cheese bites, man. That's a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, well, besides uh, Wawa and Sheets and all that goodness, uh, if anyone's looking for uh, my cousin's girlfriend's house, either merch, music, or just you guys in general, where can they find it? Well, we have a website, mycousinsgirlfriendshouse.com. That kind of has all the show information. We have a merch store on there, and it's got all our music and links and stuff. Uh, you, you can find us on any streaming platform, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Tidal, whatever. LimeWire. Uh, LimeWire. Napster. Uh, we're on all the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, My Cousin's Girlfriend's House, TikTok, uh, TikTok I think, yeah. is Cousin's GF's House because they didn't have the uh, full... I think that name was too long. Name if was I... too long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's how you can find us. And, you know, we're working on this new music, hopefully putting it out. I would probably say at this point, early next year. Pro I mean, we got Tommy House coming out. But in terms of the fully people we'll probably start rolling out singles early next year. And then hopefully continuing the weekend warrior grind, uh, doing little weekenders, hitting the eastern part of the country, and hopefully making our way to you and further beyond west at some point, too, if we can get out there. Oh, yeah. Hopefully well, it's the eastern part of the world, man. European tour? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'd love to see you guys in the cities at some point. Uh, just make sure you keep me posted for that, and I'll make sure to get a good group of people to come out and support. Um, everyone that's listening, make sure you go listen to House in the Home, Check out Tommy Huss when it drops uh, next week. Or if you're listening to this episode, you know, after it's already been out, go listen to Tommy Huss because then it's out. Uh, get those numbers up. Um, you know, one last big thank you to the three of you guys uh, for, for stopping by the, the episode. Um, and like I forgot to mention, you know, uh, we talked about links. Make sure whether you found this episode on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, well, I guess X, uh, YouTube, Threads. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> or or wherever uh, make sure you check the description down below hit those hyperlinks go follow these dudes on all the platforms stay up to date uh be ready for you know uh the ep uh and singles starting to drop uh early next year uh be ready for upcoming shows weekenders all that fun stuff go get some merch you guys got sick ass dad hats and, and oh, yeah. up there. go get that shit man um like i said Thank you guys so much for you know taking the time out of your Monday to sit down with me. I had a great time. You guys are killing it and uh, stoked for everything else you guys got going on. Thanks, Thank you, man. We appreciate you having us. We, we really do. And uh, final words, uh, fuck sheets. <laughs> Whoa. It's getting polite. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know what to right, say. Right, I'm going to get red hot over here. We can't go on another rant. <laughs> That's just the last words. All right. Thanks, dude. <laughs> All right. I'll catch everyone on the next episode. All right, man. Appreciate you.